Hey guys, I wanted to give you a quick heads up on using the train in Spain. Now, if you're from the States like me, the train is not the best option for getting around. But in some countries, of which Spain is one of them, the train is amazing and it's fantastic in particular because in the States, the roads are gigantic and wide. And here in Spain, these roads were built before cars existed. So that can be a little bit daunting uh, for those and a real test of spatial acuity. Now, before we get into that, I would love it if you would like, share, comment, join my Instagram. You know, I love the support. It helps me know what content is helpful. Now, let's get into the train in Spain. The thing that you're going to want to Google is Renfe. R-E-N-F, that is going to be allowing you to get trains just directly from the railway system. And there is an app. I personally found it easier to use what was on the computer a little bit better. Technically, you can just buy tickets at the station, but with COVID, I absolutely do not recommend that. Also, occasionally there's a strike, and right now with the economy doing what it's doing, your probability of strike isn't zero. Now the second thing to note is that you probably should get your train tickets as soon as you have certainty on your route. Now I understand that in historic times, pre-COVID we'll call it, you could just hop on the train, it's all good, especially if you really weren't caring about cost but you wanted that optionality. But nowadays, I don't recommend it. Uh, there are a limited number of seats and you might find that what you'll actually be doing is renting a car at the train station and try to navigate your way down to your final destination. Now, I would say that train relative to plane, if you're flying in from another country, I think train is probably safer. There definitely are flights via some of the connecting carriers, uh, but there aren't nearly as many as there used to be. Uh, during the non-COVID times. The train as well is very straightforward. You get on it, it's on time. If you're worried that you're gonna be delayed through customs or something like that, then you can get an interchangeable ticket. Quite frankly, it is just faster because it usually drops you off in the city center. I took this picture to give you a sense for how fast the train is moving and what you'd need to drive if you were trying to get to point B in the same amount of time. As you can see, you're really going to have to be pedaled to the floor. Now as far as pricing goes, train tickets actually cost almost the same as plane tickets these days, especially since you do have some discount carriers on the airlines. So it really is a comparable mode of transportation. Um, I would say that there are two other types of discounts that if you're in these groups, uh, if you're a young person, which they actually stretch into like low 20s and 30s, depending on what site you're looking at or what's going on, check into that. Uh, also, if you're a senior citizen, you know, the world loves to help seniors travel. So there's discounts for you there too. Now, for those of you that are more ambitious and want to travel to a bunch of cities in Spain, you've got more time, take a look and have a look at the multi-city passes and the timing associated with it and cost it out. Uh, in a lot of cases, it might make more sense, but I'll let you do that Google search. I would mention, and this can be really helpful for a lot of folks, is that many of the train stations do have lockers where you could put your luggage in there provided you're not doing something too crazy and have like the biggest uh, suitcase in the world, multiples. Um, so that is also an option, but it's not every single city. Like Granada does not have lockers, um, but Sevilla did and, and many other cities do. Also, there might be locker-like uh, facilities nearby. So look that up too if your goal is to go to a city, stick your junk somewhere, come back and know that it's safe. Now the train station area looks like this. There's usually a whole area in front where you can get coffee. But I also wanted to mention that if you were a senior citizen or listening to this for senior parents, they do have assistance to help people get safely onto the train with heavy luggage. This is what a train ticket will look like. And really it's this QR code that you're gonna need to board the train. Um, you can put the PDF on your phone or you can take a printout. The other relevant item is the car number and the seat number, and that will help you find which car to get into and which seat to be in. It is not free seating like many of the trains in the US. Now, car numbers are both on the outside and inside of a car, as you can see here, Coche 24. 
and seat numbers are gonna be over the seat as they are in an airplane. Thing I would mention because it would have been helpful to me to know this uh, for friends that are coming in through Madrid you might be able to get a rentee ticket from the airport but if you end up going through Porta Atoche it's actually very easy to get there if you go on Google Maps or if you do a couple of different things they'll recommend the metro they'll have you take a cab there's all these different things but actually there is a thing called the yellow bus and if you take that, there's two or three stops. It goes directly to Puerto Toche. If you ask the driver, they are super nice about it. And it's five euro. You're jet lagged like crazy if you're coming in from the US like me. Do that, it's the easiest. Well, that's all I really have on the run fee. I hope you guys have amazing journeys and hopefully this was helpful uh, to you guys as you travel.